Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to check out the solo Magicka Sorcerer build for the Greymore chapter. This will be an in-depth build video where I will talk about the sets, the champion points, the skills, my rotation, what you need to do to stay alive as a solo player and so on. I recently showed this off in Cradle of Shadows Veteran where I soloed it. If you want to watch the video, link in the description below. If you want the written guide on the website, link as well in the description. Let's take a look at our stats. So overall, most important is your health. 18k health should be your target. Because if you go further below, you will get one shot a lot. So 18k is a good value. Stamina is also important because you want to dodge roll a lot. To avoid like very powerful boss attacks. Or block, which also uses up stamina. That's why we have 15k. You will notice that we don't have a lot of magic recovery. With our tier 1 setup, that's not too big of a deal. Because we have false god, which helps with sustain. The tier 2 and the beginner setup don't have that. But that's where we will change our buff food. We can quickly look at the buff food. So the tier 1 setup uses tri-stat buff food like the Bevis Sugar Schools or Longfin Pasty with Melon Sauce. They both provide max health, stamina, magicka. Very strong. This one is very cheap in the guild stores. You can buy a hundred for like 5000 gold. This one as well. We use this one on our second and beginner setup. Because we don't have false god on these setups, we need more magic recovery and this one will cover it. Also very cheap in the guild store. This one is a little bit more expensive, but again, these two are almost the same value. Potions. Let's talk about potions real quick. Essence of spell power will be the best potion you can get. On the website you will also know how to craft these. You only need these when you do very difficult solo content. If you just do overland or like public dungeons, you don't need these expensive ones. You can just use the normal potions. But why are they so strong? Let's take a look what they provide. Major sorcery, 20% more spell damage. Major prophecy, 10% more spell crit. And then they also give you major intellect, 20% more magic rec recovery and 7.5k magicka by activating the potion. You need to have the alchemy passive. You need to level this up, get medicinal use. So your potions last 30% longer. The potion cooldown is 45 seconds and these potions with the medicinal use passive last 47 seconds. So you can keep up all these buffs 100% of the time. Get used to it. Every good player uses potions on cooldowns even if it's only normal potions you want to have it active all the time just to get the buffs i made an article about buff food and potions on the website i will also link it in the description because these two things are usually very underestimated and a lot of players don't run them or they run the wrong ones so make sure to choose the right buff food and potion the lever mundo stone for more damage it's just the best one when you play solo so that's this what race should you pick all magicka based races will work however breton gives you really nice sustain high elf is like the most damage because you get 258 spell damage 2000 max magicka and also a little bit more extra like magicka return when you use a class ability but again, all magicka based races will work. Should you be a vampire? No, not with this setup. It's gonna set you, it's gonna place you in a disadvantage. So looking at the gear setups, we have three. Let's first take a look at the best in slot False God, Mother Sorrow, Iceheart. False God is very strong. You can easily get this set in sunspire normal mode you don't need the perfect version the imperfect version is more than enough the imperfect version has one bonus less and that's the max magicka bonus you don't have that there so there is zero difference because the five piece bonus is what we want 
Reduces the cost of your magic abilities by 8%. When an enemy you recently damaged dies, you restore 2000 magicka and you also gain speed buff. That's just a lot of magicka return. And with this setup, that's why we are allowed to run around with like this little magicka recovery. Because we just get so much back from False God. Mother Sorrow to boost our crit like crazy with a precise trait. So we are at 73%. When I use my crystal frag, we are at 80%. That's because we have a passive here. Bram, bram, bram. Where is it? This one here. So when we cast a dark magic ability, we gain 1320 spell critical rating. That's another 6%. Let me go away real quick here. Oh, he seems to be angry. Okay. Come on. Get me out of combat. There we go. So 80% spell crit if you're fully buffed. Which synergizes well with critical search because every time we crit, we get the heal. So it's very easy to get the heal. That's why Motosaur on the front bar is very, very powerful. The back bar, we have a Maelstrom Lightning stuff. You can get this in normal Maelstrom Arena. There is also a perfect version from the Veteran mode, but the normal version is more than enough. It will boost our light and heavy attacks on the front bar as well. That's why it's so strong. That's why every build Runs this on the back bar and is still active even though when we are on the front bar. You will notice that we have two shock staves. That's why... That's because the shock heavy attacks... They deal AoE damage. And you can very easily target the enemy and restore resources through heavy attacks. The last set is Ice Heart. This is one of my favorite because it constantly applies shields to us. When I forget to activate my Heart and Ward, Ice Heart might be up and actually soak up all the damage the enemy does. Because it gives us a 5000 shield every 6 seconds. That's very strong. And once again, it also procs on crit damage, which we have plenty of. Full Divines. One medium, one heavy. So we have a 5 1 1 setup. Why? Because Undaunted Metal, which gives us overall 6% more stamina, magic, and health. All magic enchants. Then here I just have Arcane with spell damage. Absorb magic enchantment with a precise stuff. And on the back bar, back bar we have a weapon damage enchant. So when I place my elemental blockade on the ground and I swap to the front bar, the weapon damage enchantment will keep procking, even though we are on the front bar, as long as the blockade is on the ground. That's why this has always to stay on the ground. When you watch gameplay footage of me, I will always have this up, all the time. It's very important. But that's the tier 1 setup. Now we can actually look at the tier 2 setup, which is basically, instead of False God, we will get Necropotence. You can buy that one in the store, very cheap. But it depends, it might not be super cheap if you use, or if you want Divine Traits. But if you choose non-best in slot traits, it will be very cheap. That way, we will actually, when we summon our pet, we will have a lot more max magicka however now because we don't have false god we want to run witch mothers so we get more recovery that's the trade-off we have to make the beginner setup is pretty much the same thing however Like people might say, well, Modus Soro and Necropotence are very expensive in the store. If you want best in slot trades, yes. 
But if you want the beginner setup, you don't really care about passing slot, you just need the sets. And if you buy that stuff in blue quality, it's very cheap. 1600 gold for a sturdy piece here. When we look at jewelry, Necropotence, this one's a little bit expensive. You just have to look around. But overall, you should find. These were only blues. Let's check out Mother Sorrow. There we go. Mother's Sorrow. There we go. Green or blue quality. Very cheap. So as long as you don't choose like best in slot trades as a beginner setup, you will easily be able to obtain these sets. On top of that, a Mother Sorrow Lightning stuff can be obtained through a quest in Deshaun. I made a video about that as well. I will put it into the description so you can go check it out and get it for free. So yeah, you can get this whole setup for 15k as long as you don't choose like the best in slot trades. It's a very easy to get beginner setup or you can farm the gear yourself. Now let's take a look at the champion points. Pretty basic setup, 40 points in the Toma Turch. And by the way, if you're not max champion points, you can go to the website. I have 300 and I think five or 600 setups as well. 40 here, 28, 21, 51, 64 and 66. 56 in the tumbling. This is again important because we dodge roll a lot to avoid damage. 56 into Shadow Ward. 49 into Arcanist and 49 to Tenacity to increase like the heavy attack return. 56 into Warlord, 4 into Sprinter. And 49, 49, 48. 81 and 43. That's a pretty general setup. Now let's talk about skills and just passives in general that are quite nice to have at least on a Sork. For example, let's go through this real quick. Unholy Knowledge. Reduces the health, magic and stamina cost of your abilities by 6%. Very nice. After blocking an attack, your next health, magic or stamina ability costs 15% less. Because we block a lot, this is very easy like to activate. And this here, where we gain 6% more crit, like I just mentioned. We only have Crystal Frag. On this, like, from this tree on the bar. But it's more than enough. Dedric Summoning. So here we use the Pet, the Otter on the back bar. And Hardened Ward. So when one of the Pets dies, you restore 1452 Magicka. Most of the time they don't really die though. So that will not proc that often. Power Stone reduces the cost of your ultimate abilities by 15%. That's very nice. So we get our ultimate ready faster. Daedric Protection. We get more health and stamina recovery. Not on like... It's nice to have but it doesn't really matter. Because we have really low recovery, stamina and health. So yeah. Then Expert Summoner, your max health gets boosted by 8% when we have a pet active. And we have the familiar active always. Storm Calling, 10% more magic recovery. 5% more shock damage. And Amplitude, this one is very powerful. So when the boss has full health or enemies have full health, we do 10% more damage to them. That's crazy. Then Expert Mage. Which is a nice thing to have at the moment, you have 6% bonus. That's all about this and now I want to talk about important destruction stuff. Shock stuff, heavy attacks, damage nearby enemies for 100% of the damage done. So we have a lot of splash damage through our shock stuff. That's why shock stuff is so juicy playing alone. And we get a little bit more penetration. Like, yeah, it reduces the enemy's spell resistance, but that's not really that important. Let's see. Here, equipping a lightning staff increases your damage done with area of effect abilities by 8%. That's mostly our blockade and the pet damage. In Destruction Expert, when you kill an enemy with a Destruction Staff ability, you get 3600 Magicka. That can also be very powerful. 
light armor. Uh, let's start here. So we get 10% magicka cost reduction and 20% more magicka recovery from this passive. A little bit more spell resistance. A lot of spell critical. And a lot of spell penetration. That's a lot of extra damage. A lot of people forget concentration. That's a lot of extra penetration. If you want, you can also run Chakranaut, Constitution, and Resolve. Because we wear one heavy piece, so we'll get a little bit more health. Especially from Chakranaut, this one is very important. Now, Soul Magic, you don't necessarily need the passives, but you will have to level up the Soul Trap. But you get this always, even on a new character. Because Consuming Trap is very strong. I will talk about that in a second. Major Guild, because we use Shooting Star. This can be very powerful. First off, this one hits like a truck and it gives us 12 ultimate for every enemy we hit. And 2% more max magic on the front bar. So, I would recommend getting this. If you don't want to level up the Major Guild, you could run Destruction Stuff Ultimate, which would also work. Undaunted, like I mentioned before, 6% more overall resources, also very handy. Fighter skill, you can level it up because Banish the Wicked, you gain 9 ultimate points when you kill Undead, Theater or Werewolves. Then the racial stuff and most important, medicinal use passive to gain a longer potion duration. Let's talk about my skill setup and why it looks like this. Let's start, let's see, we can, yeah, let's just go through like this. Hardened Ward, this is our main shield ability. Gives us a 10k shield, also gives a shield on our monster. Every time I reactivate this, like, I and the pet will get shielded. The pet will ne most likely never die because of that. Let me quickly swap back to my primary setup. There we go. So we have this, let's see how it looks now, yeah, it's 10, 11 K. This one is just very strong, because it absorbs so much damage, and because I have Ice Heart active sometimes, it can go up to 15, 16 K. So we have just such an amount, a huge amount of shields on us, even when the enemy manages to damage us, either Ice Heart will proc, or our shield here that we can use and then even if we are 10% health it will not matter because we have such big shields active sorcerers always play around shields so when you watch gameplay of myself playing like the cradle of shadows you will see me activating this skill a lot as a solo player staying alive is your most important things healing yourself after you cover these two things, you have time to deal damage. Crystal Fragment, we only activate this when it has an instant proc, because then it's cheaper and it will also deal more damage. So when I use Force Pulse, let me kill my pet real quick, Crystal Fragment will eventually proc. Now it proc, instant cost, I use it, deal a lot of damage. Same thing now, let's go. Otherwise, it has a cast time and you don't want cast time. Force pulls itself, it's very easy to use, it's single target. Our main spammable, so we always rotate these two around. Consuming trap. A lot of people might wonder, well, this is a weak damage over time effect. Yes, it's not the most powerful one, but... I place this on enemies that have very low health, because once they die, look at the resources we get back. If an affected enemy dies, you fill an empty soul gem, nobody cares, and heal for 3400 health. You also restore 7590 magic and 3000 stamina, like, like what? who came up with this number? Jesus, that's a lot of resources. <laughs> So, you just have to learn to place this on the lowest health enemy, and bam, AK Magicka. No problem. You can repeat that as much as you want. Then we have our pet here, which both deals AoE damage, 
and it has another effect the final uh, the almost the last sentence the final pulse will stun all enemies hit for three seconds so the last hit will actually stun every round everyone around this pet very strong don't forget that especially when you're fighting several monsters this can be very good the shooting star like i mentioned before first off it deals a lot of damage and then the last sentence you generate 12 ultimate for each enemy hit by the initial blast so if i hit 10 enemies i get like 120 ultimate back that's just really really good unstable wall of storms on the back bar you have to keep this on the ground all the time first off it will boost your light and heavy attack damage on the front bar because of the crushing wall and set and it will also keep your weapon damage enchantment active even on the front bar on top of that you can set the enemy off balanced when the enemy is concussed when the enemy is off set off balance your heavy attacks will restore twice the amount of resources so no game mechanic tells you that but when you heavy attack off balance target you get twice the amount of resources back remember this and it also deals a buttload of damage of course elemental drain you always want to place this on the high health enemy or like bosses because it reduces their spell resistance by 5280 so you will deal more damage and you also apply minor magic steel debuff so you gain more resources or like your sustain is just increased very strong ability boundless storm gives you resistances 5280 physical and spell resistance it also gives a speed buff for 4 seconds, so you can really increase your movement speed. And it also deals nice AoE damage. Critical Surge, this has to be kept up all the time, it lasts for 33 seconds. It's a no brainer to keep up. If you are unsure whether you will remember this or not, you can change it like this if you want, so it's always on the front bar. What usually happens is... When people forget to keep this up, you die, because this is your primary heal. It gives you major sorcery, increasing your spell damage by 20%. Now, I mentioned before that I usually use these potions. But technically, you don't need major sorcery on this setup. However, I usually just buy these because they are available in the guild store. But you could actually save a little bit of money, keep that in mind. Now, while active, dealing critical damage heals you for 3300 health. So every second we get 3300 health. That's more than enough on top of our shields. But don't forget to activate, reactivate it when it runs out. If this runs out, you're pretty much dead. That's usually what happens. And again, the familiar, because you have to double bar it and uh, store Matronarch. If you're fighting against a single target, I recommend using this one because it deals more overall damage than shooting star. Other possible abilities that you could use are Lightning Flood, for example, which deals really nice AoE damage. Or when you go to Undaunted Mystic Orb, which deals also a lot of AoE damage. But I found this to be pretty much the best in slot setup before I showcase the outfit I want to emphasize on the most important mechanics once again dodge rolling and blocking you need to learn it especially timing while for me it might be obvious when I have to dodge roll for you it might not be because I know most of the bosses in the game so you have to learn Keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, and you will learn the pattern, the mechanics of enemy bosses or just monsters in general. So once you learn that, you will know when to dodge roll or block an attack or when you don't have to block. You can just soak it up with a shield. The more you play, the more experience you will get. Keep up your healing, crit surge. 
keep up your damage mitigation. Mage resolves to get more resistance. It's through Boundless Storm. It also deals damage, so it has two effects. Debuffs on the enemy need to be kept up as well. Keep up your shield all the time. AoE abilities. They need to be on the ground all the time. And once all that is covered, you can use single target abilities like Force Pulse, Crystal Fragments, Consuming Trap. If the enemy is close to death, apply this. AK Free Magicka. Who doesn't want that? It's like, it's juicy as hell. So all these things. I usually recommend just playing in Overland first and try some public dungeons. Then you could try some normal dungeons. And if you're really going expert level, you can even solo veteran dungeons with this setup. But you really require a lot of player knowledge. You need to know all the boss mechanics and stuff like that because there's so many one shots. You have a lot to do, but Zork overall, very fun to play. It's probably my my favorite setup, more or less, both in PV and PvP. You can not really go wrong. What am I wearing here just to quickly showcase? Abbas watch, Pelletine, shoulders, then hands. Boots, uh, pants, then the chest, the belt, and the boots. All Palatine. Color scheme, Cold Harbor Ash Black and Black Ridge Blue. The stuff, Sychic Order stuff, and on the back bar I have the normal Maelstrom stuff. The skin, let's go appearance, is the Smasha Shadow Skin from Cloudrest. Last thing, Maelstrom weapons will drop in normal Maelstrom Arena, so go get it. This setup is not very hard to get, Sun, like False God from Sunspire, normal mode, easy to get, you can buy Mother Sorrow and Ice Heart is from a fairly easy dungeon. So yeah, work on this and then I hope you will have fun with the setup. If you want to watch a few other videos you can do that here please don't forget to subscribe and hit that juicy like button thanks for watching and see you soon cheers